What's going on, Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar. And the Astonishing Melanie. And today, it is our honor, our privilege, to announce the Marvel Summer Reading Program. Uh, it is a program... At that, your local library! It is not oh. at your... Well, I mean, it could be at your local <laughs> library. It is a program that a bunch of editors got together and picked out their favorite titles. At your local social media. Oh. I don't think you can read books I that way. I love summer reading programs. Okay, we'll get to there. This is the intro. Okay, we'll talk about okay. how much you love them in a second. And I will talk about where you can find these books in collected edition format as Melanie reads off the list. So we got quite a few number of editors that have picked books, so please stay tuned. So, C.B. Cebulski um, apparently calls this The World Inside Your Window. Yes. This editorial... Um, list yes. of picks for the summer reading program. I have an important question. Okay. Do you get like stamps for each time you read one of the books and then you can mail it into Marvel and they send you a free book? No, you, you get a no prize. <laughs> That'd be really fun, Marvel, if you could do that. Yeah, stamps, uh, okay. <laughs> David's gonna be like, I knew I should have let have the list. <laughs> but uh, the reason that they're calling it the world inside your window is last year, they released a hardcover called The World Outside Your Window. and With Mar a beautiful Alex Ross cover. I so remember. Look at you, you remember. Yeah, they picked different stories from different uh, comic books to just represent how Marvel has always been part of our world, right? Like, we have a New York City, mm -hmm. Chicago. So it's really cool that they've done that. So that's why this is called The World Inside Your Window. But what it really is, like Melanie said, it is the Marvel editorial summer picks. So my wonderful wife is going to read each one of the people and what they chose and then we'll mm -hmm. put down here what they wrote well most of it whatever it's I can really fit. cool the reasons uh that the editors pick what they did yeah and we'll also share this on our social media you can read along i don't know about the stamps she's talking about you'll win a no prize if you send them off or actually you can uh, that would be fun you could tweet the people like hey i read this because no, of your recommendation. Snail mail. Fine, Fine, you can mail them something. Mail it and send a checklist. I read this and get your parents' signature. I did get a bunch of pizza coupons. All right, go ahead. Let's get started. First off, Jake Thomas. He suggests for your reading pleasure, Power Man and Iron Fist by David F. Walker and Sanford Green. Okay, this is not the original series. This is the 2015-2016 series, available in trade paperback only, and I think maybe in digital format as well. Um, so that's pretty interesting to kick it off with that series. It's Nobody really talks about it, so it's a fun series, though. A perfect maxing and relaxing comic, according to Jake Thomas. If you can read that down here. Cool. I just want to say it. Number two, Lindsay Kohick. Her pick for the summer of 2020 is Captain America by Ed Brubaker. And that's big news because this is released in complete collections, as trade paperbacks, uh, standard edition hardcovers, and, of course, the omnibus that is currently out of print, but will be coming back into print in 2021. But if you want to read along now, maybe get Do one of the, the cheap trades. Do you know the artists on that? Steve Epting. Okay. Uh, Luke you. Ross. Most of these are small, like, trades. Sometimes okay. there's an omnibus. But I think uh, Lindsay's just suggesting the probably the Winter Soldier storyline from Captain America by Ed Brubaker. Okay. But that omnibus is coming out in January 2021, reprint. So. Lauren Amaro. Mm-hmm. Ecstatics Omnibus. Okay. Do you remember how we did the old reader, new reader with... Um, nope. Okay. Mike Alred and Laura Alred's artwork? Yes. And Dan Slott's uh, Silver Surfer? Uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say that. Okay. Well, look at you. So, Mike Alred was the artist on this. It was Peter Milligan's take on... Pretty much, he shifted X-Force in a completely different uh, direction... Like, I remember. I can see the cover now. Yeah. yeah that art style. Uh, you Go Girl, Mr. Sensitive. Oh, it's it's a fun book. Uh, sadly, the Omnibus is out of print, but it is, they are coming out with complete collections if you want to get it that route. Um, or the original trade paperbacks, which is a cheaper way to get it. Numero tres. Nick Lowe, X-Men Executioner Song. You can tell my wife is a English major because this is number four, and this is not a countdown. <laughs> And she's not a Spanish or math major, apparently. <laughs> Nick, Nick Lowe is the editor of, of the X-Men. And I'm so glad that he went with Executioner's Song because that 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 one means a lot to me. Because that was the year, the summer, that the, the Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Rob Liefeld, all those guys left Marvel and said, deuces, we're out of here. So What did he, they say? 
How'd they say it? Deuces. Well, there you go. Okay. okay. <laughs> but that left the editors, Bob Harris at the time, and the creators like Fabian Niciesa. So this is pretty much Fabian Niciesa taking all the things that he was going to write for Rob Liefeld and just making a crossover out of it. Originally, this was called Sins of the Father, but they released it as the Executioner song. It's the whole story between Strife and Cable. It is available in oversized hardcover format, trade paperbacks, and the recent x-men milestone line next up sarah brunstead suggests she hulk the complete collection volume one by dan slot with juan bobillo mm -hmm. paul pelletier wow these are cool names and scott collins um and i did read, read that one yeah. this summer and it is a lot of fun that's it's a be a good easy going summer read it is. There's an omnibus coming out later this year, but there are complete collections available as well as the smaller trade paperbacks if you're interested in reading it now. But it's a, it's a different take on She-Hulk than John Byrne's take on She-Hulk. But it's still, you know, fourth wall breaking, and it's, it's fun. Yeah. Lauren Bism suggests Runaways Volume 1, Find Your Way Home by Rainbow Rowell and illustrated by Chris An Anka. Anka. Mm -hmm. Jinx. So... I love when they suggest Runaways, because every time you suggest Runaways, it's always Brian K. Vaughn, Brian K. Vaughn. So Rainbow Rowell is a young, like a young Arthur, author, what am I saying? Okay, I'm going to talk pretty one day. Um, <laughs> Which is a good book. Young, young <laughs> author, young adult, young adult, that's what I'm going to say. There you go, say. okay. She might be a young author. Uh, young adult novelist. Oh and yeah, Amanda, she, Amazing Amanda. Yeah. Talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she talked about how much she likes her uh, her run and she actually likes this run a lot too um, so I love that they're suggesting that instead of the classics uh, run of uh, Runaways but available in trade paperback <laughs> I forgot to mention that All right, Devin Lewis would like you to try Amazing Spider-Man Coming Home the first five issues of Michael Straczynski's run on Amazing with John Romita Jr. yes Damn good suggestion. Damn good suggestion. Mm -hmm. This That's really solid Spider-Man stories. This to me, like I also call it a good I hate saying jumping on point because my brain is always like jumping on point. I started reading X-Men with 168. My first DC comic was Crisis on Infinite Earths number eight. But really Wow. This is what a, a place good to start. Yeah, it was a, it was a mess. But I love George <laughs> Perez. Um <laughs> But this is a really good jumping on point because now Peter Parker's grown up. He's out of that you know that youth that he had so he's not in high school he's not in college he's no longer taking pictures uh for j jonah you know so it's it's really cool it's a good stepping stone in his life um so great suggestion available in trade paperback complete collections um there was a oversized hardcover called best of spider-man and of course the omnibus which unfortunately is out of print right now danny kazim suggests spider girl the complete collection volume one i love that I, this suggestion, I think out of most of these, with the exception of David Gabriel, of course, uh, really surprised me. This is a shocker because no one talks about Spider-Girl by Tom DeFalco, Ron Friends. It is during the time that the Spider... Uh, it's actually right after the Spider Saga, the, the Clone Saga ended. And it's the story of May Parker in an alternate universe. Do you remember the M2 universe? The M2? Nope. Like Juggernaut? Nope. Okay. Good talk. So it's the story <laughs> in an alternate reality where May Parker, the son of... Or I'm son the daughter of peter parker and mary jane parker now grows up and wants to be like her father she wants to don the costume and become spider girl so it's great and they're releasing them in complete collections there's small digest size collections and i think there were small thin trade paperbacks too did she fight mobius mobius yeah. the french artist no the vampire morbius morbius <laughs> does she fight him i can't I remember i seem to remember something like that okay Okay. <laughs> yes, she fights Mobius. <laughs> Fanfic. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of uh, breaking the fourth wall, Will Moss. Ooh, good transition. Will Moss suggests Howard the Duck, Volume Zero, What the Duck, by Chip Sadarsky and Joe Quinones. Mm hmm And we just talked about Howard the Duck, the movie, last week. Yeah. And how fun it would be if there was like a fanfic with Rocket Raccoon and other characters. And well, just read this and there you go because Rocket Raccoon's in it. Uh, Hell's Kitchen, Johnny Storm. Sounds really cool. Chip Zdarsky is one of these writers uh, that I discovered. I hate using the term discovered because I didn't discover him. He's always been there. But Chip Zdarsky is this guy that just was not on my radar until last year. He took over Daredevil. He did a run on Spectacular Spider-Man that is 
freaking phenomenal. He did that life story that we reviewed mm-hmm. that we love so really much. Good. And then he did Howard the Duck, which is hilarious. Invaders. I want to see eventually all his stuff, just oversized hardcover format, omnibus format, because he deserves it. This is only available in trade paperback so far, but it's, yeah, it's Howard the Duck, trade paperback by Chip Zdarsky. Annalise Bisa suggests X-Men New Mutants Classic Volume 1. Okay, so really quick, great choice. This is, I assume because of the movie that's coming out later this year. The classic line, however, has been discontinued and they're doing now epic formats. So the epic volume one is still available and in print. You can get it that way. Uh, or you can, yeah, I'm sure you can find the classics cheaper now, like through the third party market. But it's the beginning of the New Mutants. It's right during the time when Xavier thought his X-Men were dead because they were up in space. I'm not going to spoil what happens. Space. They were not dead. Space, heaven. No, they were in they space, were in like space. literally space fighting the brood. Anyway, <laughs> they, uh, and he formed a new team of mutants, of young mutants, being made into the movie. By the time that damn movie comes out, it's going to be called X-Force, though. Only real nerds will get that joke. Next. Martin Biro, Squadron Supreme, Bob Mark Gwyn- Grinwald, Grunewald, Grunewald mm-hmm. Bob Hall, Paul Ryan, John Buscemi, Bus- Bu- Buscema, Bu- Buscema. <laughs> Steve Buscemi. I butchered the Paul names. Neary. I'm so glad I'm not the one reading this. <laughs> so, Mark Grunewald's Squadron Supreme is one of those, one of the most important Marvel stories that they've released. It, you know, one time I've heard it, it's like Marvel's answer to Watchmen, but that's really not fair. That's not a fair comparison because it is so different than Watchmen. It's the end of a universe for these superheroes that are very much like Superman and Batman but they have their own unique little traits about them, and there's betrayal on the team. There are a lot of things he was doing in that book that no one was doing at the time. And he loved that book so much that that's the trade paperback I had, that when he passed away, because we lost him, um, you know, he was in his 40s when he passed away in the 90s, He wow. that book meant so much to him that he wanted his ashes mixed with the inks for the trade paperback when that trade paperback And you have came. that? don't anymore i'm an idiot i know it's one of my it's one of the things i never should have sold but thanks wow. for bringing that up but yeah you brought it up squadron supreme available in trade paperback there's two omnis there's a the original omnibus and then the second edition omnibus that is more complete and trade paperback and apparently you can get the version he sold from somebody somewhere okay <laughs> Next up, Jacques Porte suggests the unbeatable squirrel girl. Squirrel, you really got me now. <laughs> That's how you guys say it. This is a series, I, I on my channel, I just, you know, I've, I've, I've set up, like, I've never really gotten into Squirrel Girl. This is just, uh, Ryan North, and I think this is volumes two and three, because I've read a significant amount of these trade paper I think all the way up to six. And I don't know, it just never, she never clicked with me, but all my, my co-hosts love her, and Lydia... I'm re- indifferent. You're indifferent. I don't really know that much. Lydia likes the character, because she reviewed one of the little... Oh, uh, I did like novels. her, yeah, that, that one we reviewed together, yeah. See, I guess I'm alone here. So, this is Ryan North series, and if you want to try it out, this is the volume three in the trade paperback format. No omnibus yet. Oh, wait, they do have hardcovers, though. Oversized hardcovers, I think. Uh, that's how off I am in my Squirrel Girl game. I don't know if there's oversized hardcovers or not. How dare you? I mean, you've got all these other synapses devoted to, like, firing you know, they, off with all this other information. Like, I've, better doesn't include the author, artist. Oh, you just go ahead and say it. My, I, I failed. Sorry. All right, who's next? You found me next? as a husband and a geek. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, Josh. <laughs> Jordan White. Jordan White, Deadpool flashbacks. Okay. Jordan White was the editor on Deadpool, I want to say, and this particular trade paperback is mostly available in the Jerry Duggan um, omnibus and the oversized hardcovers. It's also, this is a trade paperback though, and it features just random issues of Deadpool, like featuring his past stories, and it kind of gives you like an idea of what the character is like. I don't, um, I don't know what's in the trade paperback, but I know it's just, you know, it's not one continuing story, it's just one-offs, but... I mean, if it's Jerry Duggan, I've really enjoyed his run. Caitlin O'Connor would like you to read Unstoppable Wasp, G-I-R-L Power, T-U-R-T-L-E Power. Get out okay, your kazoos and listen to your cassette tapes. <laughs> Marvel doesn't own Turtles. What are you doing? I'll never forget that song. So this is available in trade paperback. I don't think there's a digest size of this yet. 
And of course, most of these are going to be available digitally through the Marvel app or Comixology. Uh, this is Jeremy Whitley's run, and I know this is Wonder Maddie's, like one of her favorite series. She she begged us up and down to read it so this book series wouldn't get canceled. And he went on to do a Power Pack, and I've yet to read it. That's how. But I did read the first one. Of course, like that's what she suggested reading, and I did read that. Okay. Mark Basso suggests Maximum Carnage. Ooh. So, sorry. That's 90s. The Ooh, 90s, right? <laughs> like, well, um, Nick suggests the, the Executioner song. So now Maximum Carnage is another 90s crossover. Um, also inspired a video game for a whole generation. Yep. With the red cartridge. You all know. But this is the crossover where Cletus Cassidy just comes out of prison, gets his own team, uh, kills quote unquote some heroes and there's a team up with spider-man the doppelganger who obviously did i call him doppelganger no that's right i call him the right thing uncanny omar do talk pretty one day so the spider-man has his own team they go up against carnage's team it's like a 18 part crossover event available in epic format available in um, the omnibus format called the spider-man spider-man versus venom omnibus and there's also a trade paperback many actually there's two or three printings of the trade paperback ricky Purden suggests aries god of war by michael avon oming and travel foreman travel foreman that's a cool name yeah that's and, name. He, and he's a good artist wow and Avon Oming, he teamed up a lot with Bendis. Like, he was the artist on Powers. He did some work on Daredevil. But this is during Bendis' New Avengers run. So he was writing New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, and then Dark Avengers. And Ares was part of the Dark Avengers. But very little was known about him other than he was a hothead. And this, it was a four-issue miniseries available only in trade paperback. It's not part of any of the Bendis collections. Um... This was a really good run. It was a fun run. It was a lot different than the take that Bendis did within the pages of uh, Dark Avengers. C.B. Sabuski suggests Alpha Flight Classic Volume 1. Okay. That is John Byrne's run of Alpha Flight. And after John Byrne left X-Men, you know, he went on to do, like, Fantastic Four. He did She-Hulk. And everything was just... He was just knocking it out of the park. And this is no exception. And this, to me, is where John Byrne perfected his style. He was trying out new things with his art. This is the one with uh, Snow... Uh, what's her name? Snowbird? Snowblind? I can't remember. But the, anyway, the issue... We had a quiz a couple weeks ago about it. Yeah, and the issue is the one where... <laughs> a trivia uh, game. <laughs> where it's uh, white panels, because it's during a snowstorm. And everybody was like, oh, John Byrne's so lazy. And me, like, you know, being a 12-year-old kid reading this, going, oh, John Byrne's a genius! <laughs> What a what an interesting way how to many, make. How many panels? Uh, probably did about spawn? three or four pages worth of white out. Uh, but there's dialogue. He was writing. Oh, there's a dialogue. Book. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Like he was trying out new things. There were things with characters that nobody else was doing. Uh, it's a Canadian team. It's like the Canada's answer to the X Men. This is where Wolverine originally, well, retconned that he was originally part of this project. But anyway, it's a great choice. It's available in omnibus format, but sadly that's out of print right now. And it's also available, there's Alpha Flight Classics trade paperbacks, which is an easier way to get it. And last but not least, of course, da, 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 it's da, da. David Gabriel. Da. And his choices are... Howard the Duck Omnibus and Monster Size Behold Galactus 5 exclamation marks. Is that the sign of a madman? Yes, it is! Three or more exclamation marks, this is the sign of a madman. Um, so, this is the Steve Gerber Howard the Duck Omnibus. I didn't even know David was a big fan of Howard the Duck until we did that did Howard that the movie Duck. Or He's like, no, I actually Howard love Howard. The Duck. Um, I, and it makes sense that the 300th masterwork is going to be Howard the Duck. I don't know how I didn't put two and two together. And of course, his favorite series is Fantastic Four. That was the very first Omnibus. And the Behold Galactus Aww. is huge. So it's like the Jack. So Jack Kirby's artwork looks phenomenal in that format. It's like the monster size mm -hmm. X Men XXL. And so, uh, both of these stories, however, there's complete collections of Howard the Duck. There's going to be a masterwork. Um, there's also trade paperbacks of Behold Galactus on uh, the omnibus format and the epic format. So you can read them that way. But that oversized Kirby artwork is just freaking awesome. And that, as they say, is that. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for yeah, joining me. Yeah, what, um, which one of these are you interested in? I mean, I well, know I've, you I've like read, all of them, but well, like, I've what, read, what's your favorite out of the... 
list. Oh, I'm surprised to see Executioner's song in there. As an X-Men guy, of course I would go that route. But I think the one that I'm going to pick the most that surprised me that's in there is that complete collection of Spider-Girl. And I cannot remember who that was that suggested that. Oh, Danny Kazim. Kazam mm -hmm. uh, suggested that. I think that's a great choice. I, it's a character that not everybody talks about, very underrated, and doesn't get a lot of love. But that run has a lot of heart in it. And Oh, well, yeah, I mean, David, David's choice is obviously the right answer, though. Steve Gerber's Howard the Duck. Actually, if you've never read it, it's quite funny. Chip Zdarsky runs good, too. What about you? Uh, Alpha Flight sounds interesting to me because I like the character designs and I really don't know anything about it. Okay. Well, there's your reading program list reading rainbow so leave those comments down below what books you've not read from here if you're interested in uh reading these and like i said you know if you want to tweet the person the the editor's like hey yeah, i read this based on your suggestions yeah, yeah they would love that um don't forget to hit like literature circles it's your assignment literature circles okay can you stop being when a you talk to each other about the book and you got roles, assigned roles, and all. Oh, I, I had it. to marry a teacher. All right, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, um, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. You can support us with Redbubble, Patreon, hit that like button, subscribe. Wait, you already said all this stuff. I did, I did. I'm sure everyone's already stopped the video. What? Thanks what? for watching. Stay minty. No, <laughs> don't forget. Everybody stay healthy. You know what? No, never mind what she said. You almost put me in the face. Bye, everybody.